It is not a coincidence that the biographies of all the Wall Street giants of that era, John D. Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, Bernard Baruch, etc., all marvel that they got out of the stock market just before the crash and put all their assets in cash or gold. On October 24, 1929, the big New York bankers called in their 24-hour broker call loans. This meant that both stockbrokers and customers had to dump their stocks on the market to cover their loans, no matter what price they had to sell them for. As a result, the market tumbled, and that day was known as Black Thursday. According to John Kenneth Galbraith, writing in The Great Crash, 1929, at the height of the selling frenzy, Bernard Baruch brought Winston Churchill into the visitor's gallery of the New York Stock Exchange here to witness the panic and impress him with his power over the wild events down on the floor. Congressman Lewis McFadden, chairman of the House Committee on Banking and Currency from 1920 to 1931, knew who to blame. He accused the Fed and the international bankers of orchestrating the crash. It was not accidental. It was a carefully contrived occurrence. The international bankers sought to bring about a condition of despair here so that they might emerge as rulers of us all. But McFadden went even farther. He openly accused them of causing the crash in order to steal America's gold. In February 1931, in the midst of the Depression, he put it this way. I think it can hardly be disputed that the statesmen and financiers of Europe are ready to take almost any means to reacquire rapidly the gold stock which Europe lost to America as the result of World War I. Curtis Dahl, a broker for Lehman Brothers, was on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange the day of the crash. In his 1970 book, FDR, My Exploited Father-in-Law, he explained that the crash was triggered by the planned sudden shortage of call money in the New York money market. Actually, it was the calculated shearing of the public by the world money powers triggered by the planned sudden shortage of call money in the New York money market. Within a few weeks, $3 billion of wealth simply seemed to vanish. Within a year, $40 billion had been lost. But did it really disappear, or was it simply consolidated in fewer hands? And what did the Federal Reserve do? Instead of moving to help the economy out by quickly lowering interest rates to stimulate the economy, the Fed continued to brutally contract the money supply further, deepening the Depression. Between 1929 and 1933, the Fed reduced the money supply by an additional 33%. Although most Americans have never heard that the Fed was the cause of the Depression, this is well known among top economists. Milton Friedman, the Nobel Prize winning economist now of Stanford University, said the same thing in a national public radio interview in January of 1996. The Federal Reserve definitely caused the Great Depression by contracting the amount of currency in circulation by one-third from 1929 to 1933. But the money lost by most Americans during the Depression didn't just vanish. It was just redistributed into the hands of those who had gotten out just before the crash and had purchased gold, which is always a safe place to put your money just before a depression. But America's money also went overseas. Incredibly, as President Hoover was heroically trying to rescue banks and prop up businesses, with millions of Americans starving as the Great Depression deepened, millions of dollars were being spent rebuilding Germany from damage sustained during World War I. Eight years before Hitler would invade Poland, Representative Louis McFadden, chairman of the House Banking and Currency Committee, warned Congress that Americans were paying for Hitler's rise to power. After World War I, Germany fell into the hands of the German international bankers. Those bankers bought her, and they now own her lock, stock, and barrel. They have purchased her industries. They have mortgages on her soil. 
They control her production. They control all her public utilities. The international German bankers have subsidized the present government of Germany, and they have also supplied every dollar of the money Adolf Hitler has used in his lavish campaign to build up a threat to the government of Brüning. When Brüning fails to obey the orders of the German international bankers, Hitler is brought forth to scare the Germans into submission. Through the Federal Reserve Board, over 30 billions of dollars of American money has been pumped into Germany. You have all heard of the spending that's taken place in Germany: modernistic dwellings, her great planetariums, her gymnasiums, her swimming pools, her fine public highways, her perfect factories. All this was done on our money. All this was given to Germany through the Federal Reserve Board. The Federal Reserve Board has pumped so many billions of dollars into Germany that they dare not name the total.